Good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Community Central, where we review and examine uh, exciting uh, events and projects that are happening in the open source ecosystem. My name is Brian Prophet. I am with the Red Hat Open Source Programming Office. And before I introduce today's guests, um, the usual housekeeping notes. Um, after the presentation and demonstrations are completed, we will have a question and answer session. So if you have questions for our presenters about what they're talking about, definitely use the Q&A tool that is located in the um, prime time tool, and then we will be able to get your questions answered. And be sure to vote on those questions as well. And we'll answer them in the order of most light. So, Housekeeping notes out of the way. I'm very pleased to welcome to Community Central Julien Viet and Julien Ponge, um, who will both be here to talk about Vertex and, and the, the different kinds of development technology that's going on in that eco ecosystem. So, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if you're ready to begin, let's get started. Okay, fine. Let's start. Uh, so, hello everybody. Uh, today we are with Julien. We are going to talk about uh, the talk. His name is simply reactive. So basically, uh, it's I've been developing uh, Vertex for many years now and uh, reactive technologies, and uh, we have done a lot uh, over the past few years. Uh, we started with Vertex, and then. Uh, we will see that we have developed uh, an ecosystem of reactive uh, clients that works with Vertex. And uh, step by step, we needed more than only Vertex. We needed um, um, more high level tools for developers. So we developed something called uh, Ibernet Reactive. So I didn't do that, but it's, uh, it's done by the, Re the Ibernet team. And also a tool called Mutiny uh, that is also reactive. And those bricks were created to, I mean, to make people familiar with uh, object relational mapping and these tools. Um, easy, I mean, to make easier to use for them reactive applications. And that's what we are going to present today. And we'll finish the presentation with uh, with Quarkus. Uh, uh, so. What's about reactive? Reactive is is uh, it. What what means reactive? Reactive is 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 really a, a set of properties that you can uh, have for your application. Uh, the benefits of reactive is that its uh, applications are, uh, are easier to write uh, for uh, high scalability, and also um, we will see that thanks to reactive we we are able to write applications that have a better quality of service and that use more uh, more efficiently the resource of the of the hardware and at the basis of this is we we really write uh, non blocking applications uh, what does it mean it means that uh, traditional software use threads and uh, of most of the time uh, your threads will block when they they use resources like uh, uh, a database or uh, a backend, and uh, most of the time those resources are, are expensive, and uh, we don't want to to have this. and And there are often, uh, how to say that, um, an issue for for scaling the application. Uh, basically, uh, we want to decouple the application from the number of threads uh, that the hardware provides, and with blocking applications, we were not able to achieve that. Uh, for instance, if you have an application that has to to, to answer a, a load of uh, 1,000 requests per second, and we have only one uh, 100 threads, if the backend is really oh, like uh, it takes like one or two seconds to use, I mean to access it, uh, then the, the number of threads will be too limited to to scale the application. And with non-block blocking applications, we are able to decouple that. And so, uh, even if you have a low, a very low number of threads, like uh, 10, 
uh, thanks to this, we are able to, to, to serve the majority of clients uh, in a response, uh, I mean, with a short response time. Uh, so this is, uh, so I'm going to talk first about Vertex and about it. Uh, so this is a, a simple Vertex application. Uh, that's basically, I think, the most simple uh, application you can write. So in this example, we have a main, which is a Java application of our Java application. And we create an HTTP server and uh, we set a request handler. And it, I mean, it's very basic. And then we do listen and we can uh, use this to, to run our application. Uh, so when you use Vertex, you use a jar called Vertex Core and Vertex Core gives you uh, a set of basic of, of base services like HTTP client, HTTP server, TCP server, a DNS client. And on top of that, uh, there is what we call the Vertex stack, which is a set of uh, libraries. Uh, to access various kind of backends and integrate with uh, different messaging systems. Uh, and uh, uh, on top of that, we have what we call the reactivers, which is uh, which are more libraries to, based on top of Vertex. And uh, that and today we are going only to talk about a subset of this, uh, which is what we call the Vertex SQL client. And uh, that's something we have developed over the past few years and. Uh, Basically, it's it's a step away from traditional database access that is provided by JDBC in Java um, because uh, JDBC is by nature blocking, and when you use it, um, it can be uh, a bottleneck for the application, as I said before. And um, if you want to write uh, scalable applic scalable applications uh, with with relational database, then we had to develop our own. Uh, libraries to access database. Uh, so as I said before, um, it's talk we we really want to demonstrate the, uh, the journey we had when developing all these reactive libraries. So I will start first with the reactive SQL clients and Vertex and um, show that. And then Julien will take, the other Julien, Julien Ponge will take over and uh, talk about uh, Hibernate, still using the same libraries, and we'll finish with, uh, with Quarkus. And uh, also, Julien, in the second step, will introduce Mutiny, which is a, an application to, I mean, it's not an application, it's a set of libraries to make easier to develop uh, non-blocking applications and reactive applications. All right, so. Let's start with the demo. So that's my uh, my shell. So it's a small program that you can find on GitHub. I think in uh, Julian Pong will give the links. Uh, so it's a traditional, it's a classic uh, project. It's a it's a Maven project. So we have a pom XML, and here we have all the source code. So I can open it now. And let's do that. So uh, that's basically we have two in this in this application we have two uh, classes. The first uh, main contains only a main, and uh, that's that's pretty much straightforward. Um, for this project, we use something called test container. Test container usually is used is used for for writing uh, test unit tests with database and Docker. Uh, but in this case, it's also very easy to use and very suitable for this kind of demo. So basically, this code here only uh, let, me, let me make it bigger. Uh, that only bootstrap uh, the database. So our application is very simple. It's a, it's a REST application with uh, basically it's a CRUD application and it interacts with uh, with, with Postgre. And uh, on the client side, we interact with the application using uh, JSON and uh, REST. So it's a very basic, classic application. So this code will uh, will will just bootstrap Postgre. Then we start Vertex. So as in the example, we we create an instance of Vertex, and then what we do is very easy: deploy something called the vertical. So vertical is 
is a unit of deployment in Vertex. Uh, so that's very easy to use. Uh, so we call something called the API vertical, and that's what you are going to see next. So, I mean, this code main is, is really easy, and it's very, it's very here to bootstrap the, the vertical. Now, in the API vertical, it's, uh, we, I mean, that's, that's the start of the vertical, so we don't need to spend much lot of time on it. It's basically a lot of initialization, and here we can see, I think, what, what's important here is, is those lines which initialize the, the REST router for the application. And as I said, it's a, it's a CRUD application, so we have slash products, slash products, an ID slash products or a post to create product. And so we have three methods. And uh, let's now let's start the application and, and let's go with it. So I'm going to, I mean it's a it's a main so I can start it in my uh, in my in my ID and it will work. So here we can see Postgres starting I mean the Docker container. And now Vertex is starting, so you see it's very quick and says API vertical was successfully deployed. It means everything is, is green for me. And uh, I can use it using, for instance, HTTPI. So if I list everything, slash products, that will be empty. And if I want, I can um, insert a new product. Uh, so to do that, it's so I can go here and take something. So if I want to create a product, I can just do that. And here I created my product, and now if I list all the products, I can see product that was inserted, and I, I can use also this URL to, to only see the first one. So it, it's basically the same. The difference is here we have an array, and here it's uh, just uh, the first product. Uh, so let's look quickly at the code. And what is important here, what I want to show you, is uh, that we use something called the Vertex SQL Client. Uh, so the Vertex SQL Client uh, uh, was designed to, to, to deliver high-performance uh, access to Postgre initially. And today, it, it, you can use it for, for the database like uh, SQL Server. MySQL and uh, a few others. And uh, let's see how we, we can use it. So if you want to list everything, all the products, the API is very easy to use. We use PG pool. Uh, we do the query. We execute it. And here after that, we use um, UDN to, 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 to send everything back to, to, to the client. So if we go here, if I just take this, I will have something that is called the uni. So I will not spend a lot of time on that because the other Julian will teach you after that what are uni and multi, but they are basically the, uh, the important, the types you care about when you, when you use uh, mutiny. And thanks to this, we are able to use various operations to transform the data. So here, what I do is that uh, I take all the rows, and uh, I create a JSON array, and I add, I add each row. Each row is transformed to JSON, and then that's how I get this uh, this JSON array here. And then I just just send back the the uni of JSON array to to the HTTP server, and then the server will take care of sending everything uh, to the client. Uh, if I if you just want to, to look at the get product, uh, it's very easy to. So we, we get, I mean, it, it's very easy. We get the, the pass param ID. And then here, instead of using the other, and before it was just, a, just here, it's just a query. And here it's a prepared query because uh, we want to use uh, this. Yeah, it's very important for security purpose if you want to, use, to avoid uh, SQL injections. So we create the prepared query, we execute it, and uh, to execute it, we pass it a tuple that contains the product ID we, we got here. And here again, what we get is uh, 
uh, also get here a uni of, uh, of row set of rows, which is a result. So in this case, the row set will be empty because uh, we, are, we are just, uh, no, in this case, in the get, oh, we are in the get product. Uh, it will be only only one row that we will get. So basically what we do is that thanks to Mutiny, we transform it and we get a uh, uni of JSON objects. So, so you see it was a JSON array and now it's it's only one result. So it's a uni of JSON objects. So we don't need to do that many transformations, but we can still do them. And uh, basically that's it uh, for me, I think. Uh, now I think Julien will take over Thank and you. talk so, about yeah. uh, Mutiny. Sure. So I will share my and screen. I, oops, sorry, Julien. <laughs> you can finish. I don't know. Yeah, I need to. I'm still sharing my screen. No, it's it's over, right? Can you, yeah. Can you all see my screen? Julien, can you come yeah, with me? Yeah, OK, great. Um, so thank you, Julien. So um, Julien briefly introduced you mutiny in the code when you saw the on item on failure things in the code. Um, so before I talk about mutiny, let's let, let's get back to the to the main problem we have. Uh, so with Vertex, because we're doing reactive, we are using asynchronous I/O, and the, the the complicated thing is to compose these asynchronous operations. Uh, so there may be sequential uh, asynchronous operations, there may be concurrent asynchronous operations, etc. Et so we need programming models to compose the uh, the operations. Uh, and there are a bunch of popular models that you can find um, in, in projects uh, like future and promises, uh, reactive extensions, coroutines, etc. So there, there are many models. Uh, and mutiny, it's in the family of reactive extensions because we are about to compose uh, streams of asynchronous events uh, in a pretty nice and declarative fashion. Um, so I won't, I won't be too long on Mutiny, uh, but basically we created Mutiny not because we wanted to make yet another reactive programming library. Uh, we did it because we thought uh, there are two problems in the main uh, libraries you, you, you can find in the Java ecosystem. Uh, so one problem on the right is that um, we thought that when you want to complete, um, in your idea, you want to complete and find which operator you can have to compose the asynchronous operations. Um, you know there are too many, too many, uh, too many options, uh, and it's not always easy to navigate uh, and get your head around it. Um, and the other problem is what I call the modern hell uh, is that. To compose the, as the asynchronous operations, you're going to use um, operators that comes from the uh, functional par programming paradigms, uh, and it can be complicated. Like once you're used to it, you know that flat map or concat map is a way to compose one operation with the next operation, but it's fairly uh, away from uh, a functional domain when you write business applications. So we think these two things make it, you know, reactive programming more complicated than, than it should be. Uh, so this is why we created uh, something called Mutiny. Uh, and Mutiny uh, is, we think, a more approachable approach. Um, basically, when we want to compose things, uh, we have readable operators. Like if you want to transform the value to something else, we say on item dot transform to, and we have a lambda to say how we want to transform things uh, if we want to react to a failure, we say on failure, then do something. So this is for navigability. And we have operators where you can come back to the code maybe six months later and you understand what's going on, which is not always the case if you use other libraries uh, with functional per, per, uh, functional items, which can be complicated. Uh, which now, uh, pushes us to Hibernate. Um, so what Julian showed you in, in the code is the role.sql client, which is great because you can pass SQL queries uh, and it's very easy to use and it's very fast. Uh, it's a great thing. Uh, but then people may be interested in using more traditional uh, enterprise object relational mapping paradigms. Um, and Hibernate is basically the king in this er in this era. It's the famous project for, for doing that. So the great thing is that Hibernate now goes to reactive. Uh, so you can still get, you can still have vertex, 
and our great SQL uh, reactive drivers for Postgres, MySQL, etc. And then we have Hibernate, which is now in a reactive uh, variant. And you can, from your application, you can use Mutiny or Compression Stage if you want to, uh, to do asynchronous object relational mapping, which is great. So I have a quick demo, which is basically the same as what Julien showed you. Uh, but it, instead of manipulating JSON, uh, so we had products, you know, with a name and a price. And instead of manipulating the, uh, this entity as pure JSON, uh, we can have a more traditional entity uh, with with Ibernet. So this is a, a very simple uh, product uh, entity. And then um, it's basically the same uh, the same vertex application. The only difference is, is that in the um, in the vertical, which is processing things, uh, we are not going to use uh, directly the SQL client. We are going to use uh, Hibernate and a session factory. So, for example, if I want to list all the products, I'm going to do something which is like this uh, with session. Then I create a query, and I get uh, and I get back. Uh, a uni, so that's because it's a one-shot operation. So I get a uni with a list of all the all the products. Um, same thing if I want to insert a new product in, in in my database, I'm going to get there. I'm going to extract things from the request using the Vertex Web APIs. Then I have my product, which I'm going to create with Hibernate, uh, and then I'm going to attach to attach it to the session, so to process it. Then I will use so chain. It comes from Mutiny. Is to say the first operation is asynchronous. Then I chain with another asynchronous operation, which is to flush, and then I replace the result with the product, which is to say that when I, um, if I run it, I'm going to do a quick, quick run. So again, it's going to start a container for me, uh, and it will be. It will be here for me very, very soon. Um, so I'm going to get there. Um, so if, if I list all the products, I have nothing. If I create a new product, and because we're French, we're going to have a baguette. Um, so I insert a new, a new product into the database. And you can see that the entity has been returned to me with the ID, which uh, is to say that it's been successfully inserted and I have an ID for my entity now. Uh, so the great thing also, uh, also if you look into the uh, the logs, so they are a bit verbose because Hibernate has been configured to be verbose here, uh, but you, you can see that all the requests are done on the uh, vertex event of thread. So it's all running asynchronously uh, and respects the uh, vertex threading model uh, for the uh, asynchronous operations. So it's great because Vertex and Hibernate Reactive, they work together uh, and you can have purely end-to-end -end, um, asynchronous between the HTTP server to the uh, to the database. Um, so this is the toolkit version. Uh, and we know, of course, about Quarkus, uh, which is our great framework if you want to make um, cloud-native applications. And it's also great if you want to make reactive applications. Um, so basically, again, we get back to demo uh, because if you take this, this this demo with Vertex and Hibernate Reactive, this is in, in the toolkit vision where we are, we are composing libraries together. But then we have the Quarkus version, which is the, the framework version, and it's basically all all, the, all everything we showed you until here um, is basically it gives you an idea of what Quarkus is doing in terms of integration. So again here I have my products. Uh, I could have just do I could have done a copy and paste to just reuse my uh, Hibernate entity for product um, and it would work. It would work pretty well. But there is something else in uh, in Quarkus which is called Panache. And Panache it's basically the uh, active record pattern that you can use in Java. So instead of instead of having this class with getters and setters etc I can just have public fields for my uh, for my entity, and then I have some factory methods to you know do, do some bulk operations like 
finding all the elements and it gives me a multi uh, so it's a stream of uh, of, ma of many products I can do find by name to get uh, to make a database request to find a product by name etc uh, and then so you could use Vertex in Quarkus, uh, but you can also use uh, REST easy reactive. So it's REST easy, but it works with reactive types. Uh, so for example, to do the same API, I have here a get. Um, if I want to list the products, I can reach on a multi of product and it's going to be nicely converted to, uh, to a JSON array, but it's reactive. So instead of giving you a product, if, instead of returning a product, you return uh, a, a multi or a uni from from Eugene. So, for example, if I want all the products as your product at all, which uh, comes from Panache and it, it makes it very very easy to read. Um, if you want to create a product, it's a one shot operation, so it gives you a uni of product, and you do product that process and flush and replace with the product you got, etc. So it's very small, very easy to read. And of course, if I run it, because I have to run it, um, so with Quarkus Dev, um, something you, you should note is that Quarkus, uh, since the last release, uh, it comes with something called Dev Services, which means that just as we showed you with Vertex, it's going to create, in development mode, it's going to create um, a container for my Postgres database automatically. I don't have to do anything. And again, uh, if I interact with my API, I can just, you know, do the same thing. It works very nice. And if you go to the logs here, you can see something, uh, which is that my processing has been done again on Vertex event loops because Vertex is um, used by REST EC Reactive and by Quarkus in many places for all the reactive things, basically. Um, so it's pretty nice. You have the framework vision, you have the toolkit vision, and you can just use whatever is, is best for you. Um, so reach, we are reaching the end of the presentation. Um, so again, the takeaway is that um, Reactive is great if you want to build resource-efficient services, uh, which means that one process instance is able to, to deal with, uh, with many, many concurrent requests, uh, which is saving you money. Uh, we have the full Vertex ecosystem, which is made of reactive, um, reactive bits to make and compose your applications. And then, uh, also supported by Red Hat, we have Quarkus, which is a great framework for doing reactive applications. And inside it, you have Vertex, Hibernate, Mutiny, and other things like REST easy reactive. So you can also make end-to-end uh, -end, um, reactive applications, but with a more familiar enterprise programming model. So that's it from us. Uh, and I will probably stop sharing my screen, I guess. And I think we can go to the Q&A. That's right. Thank you for your uh, presentation and demonstration. Um, so we have a few questions that have come in. Um, the first one is from Devin, who who asks, are there any thoughts towards making a standard SPI for reactive access to databases so that there is a consistent format for every database, which we can act, access in a reactive manner. Uh, ADBA is no longer under develop, development, so a standard would be nice. So can one of you answer that one? I think I can. Um, there is actually um, a, kind of a standard that was uh, Created that already exists, uh, but we don't uh, we don't implement it in Vertex because Vertex was created before this this standard, and uh, and currently we don't uh, we don't want to invest time uh, in that standard because basically what we care about is uh, is uh, is mostly Hibernate and Hibernate works with Vertex. Uh, I mean this this standard is. It's very low level and it's great if you want to make uh, Vertex works with everything. And, and, and currently, there are not many applications on top of reactive SQL clients. And uh, there's Hibernate, and Hibernate directly use Vertex. So we currently, we don't need this standard. 
Okay, thank you. So the next question comes from Noel, who asks, is there any blog or tutorial which shows developers how to change from an imperative mindset to a reactive mindset? For example, take a standard uh, CRUD app and make it reactive with step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very good question actually. Uh, no matter what, transitioning from imperative to reactive, it's always going to be um, an educational process. You need to learn about a new paradigm and there is a shift uh, to do, that's for sure. So it's a bit harder to do uh, asynchronous. Uh, then in terms of resources, um, we have, we have um, guides on the Quarkus, uh, Quarkus project documentation. We have elements in the project documentation as well with a bunch of how-tos if you want to get started. Um, I don't want to do a shameless plug, but I wrote a book about, you know, doing uh, vert it's called Vertex in Action, and it teaches you how to do reactive if you have a Java background. Um, so there are a bunch of resources we can provide, uh, but Still, there is a there's a gap. Uh, I, I would I would suggest if you're really you, if you're really focused on CRUD uh, to take something like uh, what what I showed you with uh, and, and we will share the links to the to the examples. Uh, but taking the CRUD example on Quarkus uh, because it's using more familiar paradigms and I mean for enterprise developers. Um, and basically in, in REST is reactive you change from Returning an entity, you return now an asynchronous entity with with mutiny. So it can be a good start, I guess. Okay, good to know. So Devin has come back in with another question. Asks, currently the stream all method in Quarkus repositories and active record record is just loading the result set in memory and then streaming the list. Wouldn't it be more reactive and more memory efficient to stream the result set from the database? That's a great question. Um, I think it's 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 important because I mean there are a lot of misunderstanding because people think that databases are reactive, and um, even if we in Vertex we call that the reactive SQL client. In fact, the databases are not reactive because um, they are not designed to, to stream content from the database. And usually when you want to best use your database, you want to keep short, very short the interaction between, uh, between the SQL client, for instance, and the database. So it's actually better to load uh, everything in memory and then write it to, to the client. And if you have a lot of content, then you should operate like people have been doing for the past 20 years. They, they, they just use chunks of tables. So like, I mean, we all know in MySQL the famous uh, limit of sets that allows you to get the first 20 rows, then the next 20 rows, et cetera, et cetera. That's, uh, that, that, that's I think, the most efficient way to, to do that. Great. Um, next question comes from Ali, who asks, how do we compare this to Spring Reactive Mono slash Flux? Is it one-to-one -one mapping? Um, uh, yeah, it's the, the, the same idea. It's the same idea. So um, in Mutiny, a uni is for one-shot operations. So it's just like a mono. Uh, and Flux is for streams. Uh, and basically what we have in Mutin is called multi, uh, multi. Uh, so it's, it's for stream of operations. And something I should mention is that in uh, Mutiny, we also provide an integration with all the li libraries in the ecosystem. So we have um, uh, APIs to convert back and forth between uh, Reactor, Eric Java, et cetera. And since we are based on reactive streams, which is a, a specification with a TCK and a standard, uh, we, we pass the whole TCK, so we just compliant with anything which is reactive streams compliant. Okay. Next question from Christopher, who asks, um, I have now upgraded all of my applications from Vertex 3 to Vertex 4, and I'm very happy with the updates. What is the lifetime of 
Vertex version 4, and is there another major release being planned? Uh, so um, I think it's Vertex 4 will have a few years uh, <laughs> to live at least. Um, I mean, it's very, I mean, the development of Vertex is very dynamic and, uh, and, and is driven by, uh, by the needs and we never anticipate uh, everything uh, that is coming in front of us. So uh, I don't know how, how long it will take. I mean, how long it will last. Uh, uh, it's, it's also the fact that you can see Vertex 4 as an extension of Vertex 3. It's like a better version of Vertex 3 that comes with futures, but as we say on the website, um, people that knows Vertex 3 will be will feel comfortable and will feel at home with Vertex 4. Uh, that's why it's it's so easy to migrate from 3 to 4. Uh, so maybe, I think maybe Vertex 5 will, uh, uh, so I, I say that because yes, Vertex 3 and Vertex, Vertex 4 is basically the natural evolution of Vertex 3. And, and, and maybe that Vertex 5 will um, make more drastic choices and more breaking changes uh, because it will have to adapt to, to Java's changing. Uh, you know, things like coroutines, Loom, uh, a lot of things are changing in Java that are not yet available, but Vertex 5 might, uh, might be less, I mean, we, we we don't know. I mean, it's a lot of speculation about that, and uh, we don't know yet. Uh, and for now, we are really happy to to continue developing Vertex 4 and uh, improve what we have, because we spend also a lot of time on the improving APIs, adding new bricks to the ecosystem, like like basically the the SQL client. Uh, we we find it great, but it took took us many years to of iterations to. You know, to, if you know the JDBC client in Vertex, to, to, to take, to take this API that was a JDBC client and, and, uh, and spend time to make, uh, the easiest and simplest and most powerful API to use that is a SQL client. Okay. Well, we have run through the audience questions. I did want to probably pose the most important question that came up in chat was, where do you find baguettes for less than one euro, Julianne? People want to know. Yeah, that's my mistake, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, in France, oh. uh, right, right around the corner, you can find it. <laughs> oh, all right. So you heard it there. So everybody track him down and find the, the inexpensive baguettes. But you seriously, to, to both of you, thank you so much. Um, for, for coming on today and, and walking us through Vertex and reactive programming. It was very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Great. And with that, we're going to wrap up another edition of Community Central. Be back next week for another session uh, around the Ceph project. But until then, be safe and have a wonderful day.